Hello and welcome to People in Power, I'm Juliana Rufus. It's July 2006 and Adamo Bova, head of security at Telecom Italia, falls to his death from a motorway bridge in Naples. Did he jump or was he pushed? It's a mysterious death, but the former policeman was working on mysterious cases. Italian prosecutors had asked Bova to investigate the role of the American and Italian military secret services in the abduction of Egyptian cleric Abu Omar in Milan 2003. Tracing mobile phone calls, Bova inadvertently stumbled upon a vast secret call interception system inside Telecom Italia. Politicians, bankers, businessmen, even footballers and referees were being monitored. This was a scandal that went right into the nerve centre of Italian power. Our reporter Elizabeth Filippoli investigates. A web of corrupt officials and a profitable wiretapping business. Italy is stigmatized by a political scandal of massive dimensions. On July 21st, 2006, Adamo Bove, head of security at Telecom Italia, fell to his death from a motorway bridge in Naples. He was a master at detecting hidden networks. Bove left his home at midday, telling his wife he had some errands to do. Uh, it happened in a very, in a very trafficked uh, road in Napoli. Um, it was something like a bridge, and then apparently he threw himself in the uh, something like a 30 meters uh, fly. And uh, there was one witness who saw only him coming down. It was organized, it was premeditated because they wanted to destroy my son. His death is not clear, because the, um, it was an apparent suicide, by, but uh, on one side it was su surely a forced suicide. He was pressed to... They made him think that he was, in any case, destroyed by the... I don't really believe that a man who's been a very important and very successful policeman such as Adam Obove could be a man that collapses psychologically so easily in front of some kind of obstacle. He had a diary and the, all the pages of July, the month in which he died, were um, strappate, how do you say? Taken away. Taken away. At the request of Milan prosecutors, Adamo Bove was investigating the abduction of Egyptian cleric Abu Omar by the CIA and the Italian intelligence service known as SISMI. He was using mobile phone records. In one case they asked to him a private number of a supposed terrorist. And it was the SISMI who needed the number. So, I mean, he was, he was making something not completely regular but not completely illegal. He was contributing to our secret services in the name of a fight against the terrorism. There is a director who is like a puppeteer, someone who pulls the strings. The one thing is that Adamo was finished. The important thing is the discovery of radar. Inside Telecom Italia, a legal interception system called Radar was capable of recording sensitive information about millions of Italians. Adamo Bove, a former policeman known for his integrity and competence, had been hired by Tim to manage the radar software system. As the head of security, he had access to the radar system, which is a piece of software that allows the extraction of telephone traffic from any mobile phone. A scandal had broken out, revealing the covert operations of a superpower on foreign soil. The Abu Omar abduction was illegally conducted by the CIA in Milan. Adamo Bove traced the American agent's phone numbers and names and handed them to his bosses. After a while, an arrest warrant was issued for the CIA agents. Unfortunately, this Adamo Bove figured out they were tapping 
and was able to reconstruct the movements of some 16 or so CIA agents in that country. And when he found that out, he was murdered. Without even noticing them, signed his death warrant. Following Bove's death, attempts were made to link him to the White Up scandal. The mastermind behind it was apparently the head of Pirelli security system, Giuliano Tavaroli. This scandal is very big, it's very large, its depth is yet to be understood thoroughly. Spies, people who are now under investigation, had under their control an enormous number of people from the financial world, including some associate members of Pirelli, Telecom, and so on, and several politicians. They were paying uh, kickbacks, mm, bribes, to, mm, to policemen, to secret services, to um, uh, um, ministry, uh, I don't know, marshals, or uh, um, many public officials to get private sensitive information about the private life or about business or about uh, um, personal secrets. This was done in a massive scale. There are, there are thousands of Italians spied. Tavaroli's right-hand man was his childhood friend Marco Mancini, number two in Italian military intelligence. He got into the Italian military intelligence, the SISMI, and he succeeded in becoming the number two of the Italian military intelligence. But the relationship between the two of them was never interrupted. The third member of the group, Emanuele Cipriani, managed the Illegal Information Collection Agency. Cipriani, on the contrary, had never been a police officer. He was an ex-bank employee who decided to become a private detective. They were making illegal... Uh, uh, dossier, right, investigations, collecting information even from civil services and so on. And when they were making uh, uh, tabulati, we call it in, Ital in Italy, data phones, um, which is also very dangerous because with uh, the dat your data phone you can know uh, who is your lover, who is your, uh, no, you, you register all the, all the telephone call made to which number, at what time, how it lasts, uh, how much it lasted, and so it is in any case sensitive. The victims of the White Up scandal in Italy were politicians, businessmen, bankers, journalists, and a number of prominent citizens. The perpetrators' motives involved either to sell the collected information and benefit financially, or to prevent politicians from getting elected. And this was the case with Alessandra Mussolini. They enter in my computers, uh, in my privacy, my own life, Mine, of my familiars, uh, my parents, uh, my mother, my children, everybody under control. Mussolini was running for the local elections in the region of Lazio. And what happened uh, that uh, the, uh, the people who had been spying here had the chance to set up a trap, quite a complicated trap to explain, but a trap that basically prevented her to, to run for the local election. So she, uh, I mean, she paid a huge uh, price in terms of uh, political damage. This project was part of the so-called Super Amanda operation, a lawful scheme operated by Telecom Italia, which was collecting information for Milan magistrates. Super Amanda's initial purpose was to fight crime and terrorism but some of the appointed eavesdroppers crossed legal boundaries by doing favors for people who were willing to pay the right price for important secrets. The Super Amanda project was basically tapping the whole country. Amongst the first ones to be wiretapped was the president of the European Commission of that time, Romano Prodi, the current Italian president of the cabinet. They had a back room where they were intercepting the phone messages of politicians on both sides, of journalists, and even of football players and referees. 
In un caso addirittura in one case, Bobo Vieri, an Inter Milan football player, had been spied on. And that was because the inter-team president, Massa Moratti, according to what Tavaroli himself declared, asked Marco Tronchetti Provera to give Inter some help keeping under control this football player who is known for very intense nightlife. It's a spy story with the judge inside, with the members of other lists, political lists, and with the investigations uh, people, private people, who, who were uh, engaged on this and paid for this. The information that was being intercepted included business information. Just if I were trying to listen to Bill Gates to see if he were a spy and I found out, oh, he's doing something that's a new product. In Italy, they sold that information to business intelligence firms. When the scandal erupted, a scapegoat had to be found. In June 2006, a Telecom Italia report was leaked to the press and pointed at Adamo Bove as the one responsible for the illegal access to the security software. In June 2006, between May and June 2006, there was surely, absolutely surely, a plot to make the prosecutor think that Adamo Bove was the only one guilty the only one, we call it capro expiatorio, no? the only one, uh, the person to sacrifice, no? to tell he what in, uh, the only one bad guy in Telecom was Adam Bove. His death benefited a number of people. His investigations had made enemies who would prefer him dead. So who is it that wanted Adam Bove dead? Who were his enemies inside and outside Telecom Italia? More after the break.